It's the 10 to 1 podcast with your host, Brad Oman, featuring Ben Conowitz and Nate Laux. And here's the podcast. Hey, hey, hey. hey friends. Yeah. Waka, you, waka, friend. waka, waka. We're having a good time. We really, listen, guys, we wanted to get this one out really early. Right away. It's we've, had like, some short, we've had some short. We had a couple of technical issues. We're on the yeah. struggle bus a little bit. But we're yeah. here, and we're going to get this out as soon as possible. I just, I can't wait to talk to you guys about this episode. It was phenomenal. It was I'm one kind of, of over favorite, it. One of my favorite episodes of, of the year, maybe two years, maybe three years. It's just a great episode. Yeah, we intended to get this one out on Monday, like right away, but then we had some technical issues, and then we were going to record it last night, but uh, but then like uh, pilots were playing terrible pranks on me, um, and just wanted to keep circling the runway, and so we just we just couldn't do it. So just he, just time wise. So here we are recording it, and hopefully you're listening into it very soon, at, shortly after we recorded it Wednesday evening. Um, and it's it, putting pressure on Nate. And we know that the best time to listen to uh, a Saturday Night Live recap is the Wednesday, Wednesday after the show. <laughs> yes, there. yes, so, we get it. But let's uh, dive right in. Yeah, let's I mean, dive right Ryan in. Gosling, Ryan Gosling, Chris Stapleton. I do have a question about this. He's okay. 40, 43. You looked it up. Okay. He, he is very handsome. And he's also like seven years younger than Eva Mendez. And she's just still, I mean, just, just a, a fox. A treasure. Yeah. A treasure. But do you guys find. That Ryan Gosling is a total dilf. I mean, I don't know what phrase you, whatever you want to use that describes his overall hotness and appeal. He's charming. Yeah. He's musical. He's he's one of those people who it's infuriating yeah. how much talent and <laughs> yeah. like yeah. beauty and charisma and just all of these things. Like you can't be this funny and handsome and good at dramatic acting. Yeah, and no nobody should be allowed to do that. Yeah, it's unfair. But here we go. All right, Ryan Gosling, third episode of Saturday Night Live. This is his first time hosting. The first time was December 5th, 2015. The second time was September 30th, 2017. I'm going to ask this. Um, who was the... Uh, who wasn't it December? September 30th, 2017 was his second time. Did he host in, at Christmas in 2015? Yeah, December 5th. Oh, okay. I thought I didn't hear that one. Yeah, okay. And in 2017, uh, listeners, was the first episode for current cast member Heidi Gardner, <laughs> current cast member and uh, just the biggest crush that Ben has probably, it's Heidi true. Gardner. Um, Call and me. We had a lot of cameos this episode, uh, including Kate McKinnon, Emily Blunt. Spoiler alert. Kate, Caitlin Clark, who I thought we we're going to talk about that, did a fairly good job. And then Kyle Mooney in... In Kyle Mooney fashion, comes back on SNL in a cut for time sketch. Of course, <laughs> yeah, makes uh, perfect sense. Crazy, it's actually perfect. I, know, it's I didn't even think about that until you said it just now. That's a perfect way to to get it there. I love it. All right, let's move on. Close Encounter, Cold Open. Three friends, played by Ryan Gosling, Kate McKinnon, and Sarah Sherman, are being questioned by the NSA and SETI after experiencing another, yet another. Alien abduction. <laughs> this is a, a recurring sketch they've done now eight times. The first one was on Ryan Gosling's first episode uh -huh. in December 5th, 2015, and they've done it on now all three of his episodes. Do you guys know who else were on the Close Encounter episodes that they've done, or the Close Encounter sketches, any of the other celebrities? Uh, uh, Brie Larson. Correct. Uh, Casey Affleck. Yep. Um... Ch -ch 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 who was in the? Uh, did Cecily Strong do it when she? Well, hosted? she was. She, she, she was, was. She was one of the main. She was playing the other. Yeah. Did she? Has she hosted since she's been gone? No. No. I don't okay. Think sorry. So. Not, sorry. Yet. Sorry. Not yet. Yeah. Hopefully they'll bring yeah. her back. Uh, Leah Schreiber. There you go. Yep. And then Paul Rudd. Oh, okay. I forgot about Paul Rudd. Yeah. Yep, and then the other one was Natasha Leone, which we covered on this episode or covered on this podcast. There you go. All so right. those are the other ones on there. <laughs> and now, what's interesting about this is the last time they did uh, a close encounter sketch that was Kate McKinnon's farewell episode. Oh and, yeah, and she used the sketch to say goodbye, and it was called the final encounter. Correct, but, but apparently not. Apparently not. Those aliens dropped her back off. 
Yeah. And then picked her back up. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you guys think of this one? I thought it was hilarious Listen, as usual. I laughed my juicer and my deucer off. Okay. <laughs> my south mouth could not have more fun. This I just I was hanging on every word. They they added a, a, an element of physical comedy to this. Oh when, my god! When Kate McKinnon is you know kind of going all over Ryan Gosling and looking up you know his crotch. so this is, so this is interesting. I'd forgotten about this. They actually added a physical element in the second one. Did they? Because she pokes around his butt and oh, he also loses. I, it I didn't that remember sketch. that. Yeah. And I, the only reason I know this is because I literally just listened to uh, an episode of the Good One that is all about the Close Encounter sketches where Jesse really? David Fox talks to Kate McKinnon. Uh, and so so yeah. So that was they. They talked about you know the the inception of it and all that kind of. Is there thing. anything from that podcast you learned or anything else? So Kate McKinnon counts the original Close Encounter sketch as one of her like top three all time favorite SNL moments because she said like you could just feel the energy as the sketch was going on that like it was soaring and everyone was loving it and like she just like absolutely cherishes that that sketch. I lo- that's got to be the best feeling, especially yeah. when as a sketch performer, as you know, a lot of times it doesn't go well. Yeah. You know, you, you, you got that one out of 10 average, that's at least good. And maybe one out of a hundred, that's great. And one out of a thousand, that's an all timer. Yeah. You know, that's so that, cause that is an all timer, right? That's an incredible sketch. And one of the best things about starting this episode was there was no political cold open. Mm-hmm. It started just hot, mm-hmm. right? It just started hilarious and I wonder. We've now I, had two episodes in a row where there was not a political means, cold open. Which or, means people at the show listen to our podcast, which is great. We, I think we knew that. Lauren is a regular listener. But like, um, I, I do think, though, it sets the rest of the tone for the episode. Absolutely. When the first one goes really well. Yeah, because you can't deny that the audience is just now primed and ready to laugh. Yep. It's it's just like at a comedy club where you have an opener and a feature before you have a headliner because you don't want the headliner to go out there cold. So I know that they obviously have warm up comics, you know, at SNL for real. But I think that it kind of resets when the show starts. And if you bomb right off the bat, it's hard to get them back sometimes. Yeah, you you have to know or you have to think that the cast members feel of those cold opens that aren't working all that well. Right. And yeah. so, OK, we're going to do the monologue. Usually they can get them back in the monologue. But when it starts hot like that, it's just. It was great. It's a damn rocket ship to the moon. Just good stuff all around. This was just, yeah, a hell of a way to start the episode. And the fact that they were able to get Kate McKinnon back for yeah, it, too, Especially that since you got to wear Ryan Gosling like a hat. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on. Ryan Gosling monologue written by Ryan Gosling, Mike DeCenzo, Dan Bulla, and Jake Norwin. I think it was Mike DeCenzo that said that a lot of this idea for the Ken stuff came from Ryan Gosling himself. He That's had the really concept. Funny. They just helped him write it. Ryan Gosling hosting for the third time, third time reminisces about his role as Ken in the Barbie movie. Obviously, they they played this well because Ken is getting a little dated now, right? Mm-hmm. This this the everyone's kind of over Barbie, um, but it had its moment. That, it had a long the moment. The idea that Ryan Gosling is still holding on to it, it <laughs> is a great little comedy bit that they were able to do. The song was good, um, and then bringing Emily Blunt in was fun. Right. And and I I'll admit this. I will I will be a man and admit this. Got a crush on Emily Blunt, and so uh, not, she's not just, just bringing Emily Blunt in, but then turning it into an Oppenheimer moment, yep. and then a Barbenheimer song. Can bring bring all those things together, and then doing just, the the physical stunt work to bring the Fall Guy into the play. Yeah, that's what, it was. Yeah, it was great. it was wonderful. A, I, I, a really great, fun, finely tuned monologue that has music and jokes and just a lot of great stuff in it. Yep. And right, I mean, you're on SNL typically to promote something, right? You've got a movie, you've got a TV show, you've got something going on that you want people's attention on. And they were able to do that with Fall Guy, right? They yep. were able to bring that in even even though they're talking about um Barb and Hammer. So, mm-hmm. really, I love really it. well done. Ryan Gosling again, just so so charming. All right, moving on. The Engagement, written by Jake Norwin, Mike, De- Mike DeCenzo, Jimmy Fowley, and Kira O'Sullivan, a newly engaged couple played by Ryan Gosling and Chloe Feynman, shares their good news with their friends, Ego Wodum and Andrew Smukes. Brad, am I saying that right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, Ryan's, uh, Ryan Gosling's continuous whisper on this just sold this oh, for me. God. It was. Did you see the and then the screen in his like, neck to, to yep, do it? Yep. I did notice he was he, like, when I whisper, I'm whispering. But man, he was really well because it's, yeah. it's really a you're, you're whisper. yelling whispering. Yeah, oh, God, it, it has so to good. be. It's like a talk, right? Yeah. yeah. So he's 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 changing his voice to sound like I a whisper. Don't, I don't want to do this. <laughs> 
But Dismukes was just brilliant in this. I loved this sketch. What did you guys think? Yeah, no, uh, it was, it. the escalation was good. Oh, so uh, good. But just the fact that I think Dismukes was my favorite part. Yeah. Ryan Gosling's doing a, a lot of heavy lifting with the whisper, yeah. right? But Dismukes' reaction or not reaction or whatever, like everything was just, I don't want to be a part of this. It was perfect. He you played know, it perfectly. I'll say this too, because we've been a little bit of critical about some of the direction of some of these sketches. This was a back and forth ping pongy type of sketch between Dismukes and Gosling. And there was a lot of like facial comedy in this, and they hit it. They hit the marks on this. It was. I thought it was. It was. Yeah. It was just on fire the whole time. One hundred percent. Even even though they had that moment where Chloe Feynman walked in a little yeah, early, early, early. Yeah. It's like this was this was one of those episodes where the momentum was there. It was so good, and like they just like it didn't interrupt anything. Everyone was, seemed to be operating on. High I keep level. driving to the airport, <laughs> and I can't get on the plane. I also felt this ended, right? And it was a fine ending. Like, because how do you end some of these sketches, right? But it was a fine ending. He left the the conversation there. But as a whole, I thought the sketches kind of ended fine this yeah. this this episode too. Like there was yeah. no super awkward ending of sketches, they which there always are. They didn't tack on a White Castle <laughs> yeah, logo on right. or something, you know. It was just they just knocked it out of the park this week. Spectacular. And also I, I'm gonna make sure that I get sound bites of Ryan Gosling saying my name too. <laughs> Brad, <laughs> am I saying that right? Uh Get That Boy Back featured Chris Stapleton, written by Chloe Trost, Ben Marshall, Martin Herlihy, John Higgins, Jimmy Fowley, and Kira O'Sullivan. A group of women, played by Ego Wodum, Chloe Feynman, and Chloe Trost, sing a song about getting revenge on the men who betrayed them. Um Heidi Gardner plays Chris Stapleton's mom Mother. and does just fantastic in this. She just made me laugh so many different times. Uh, the concept was funny enough. It wasn't great, but it was funny enough. The song was fine. I, I disagree. I think the no, concept I, is great. I, I think the concept, concept is fine. fine. It's, 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 it's a simple concept, but it's executed it was, spectacularly because the, the song is catchy. You have a thing where you have two normals and a weird. And the and I love Chloe Trost's brand of weird in this kind of sketch. Did because, you? Yeah. Because she was just crazy weird? Yeah, because it's, it's just a totally like... Uh, but like, it's not... See, it's... <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt. I think that we're on the same page here, though. It's not that it's like Christian Wig weird, where like small hands and, and right. just disgusting weird. It's just like kind of like psycho weird. But yeah, like, it was like yeah, weird. It's psychotic. It's, yeah, it's the same thing with that that one sketch with the uh, when she was the orphan. You know. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. And 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 they even play it right. Ego Wodum kind of gives her a look a couple times about like yeah. Okay, they they both get really uneasy. Like what's going on? <laughs> also, Chris Stapleton can act. Yeah, he was he was, he was yeah, fantastic yeah, he was in this. But like yeah, it's I like I love just the idea of how obsessive she is of like the swap of the shoes and the like hiding in the, in the, the house and like the, the, the intense camouflage paint and you'll notice that right the the first lyric is lipstick on the hood and then the keying of the car and then so it, they are literally escalating in that way and I love that because it, it's just it's a it's, it's a very well executed sketch yeah just, what's wrong with you Nate no I, I thought it was good maybe what? because maybe because it was such a great episode that this one wasn't the one that caught my this, attention. Th I mean, this, this was great. This one isn't even, I think, towards the bottom no. of, of, of the night. Well, we'll have to talk about that. But you guys didn't mention Heidi Gardner and how great she was. And she was no, great Heidi Gardner was fantastic, of course. I just don't like it when they make her old. I would have thought I would have thought that that would have gotten you going. <laughs> I will say the, the whole like when he's what was it? He's on the phone and she's like yep. talking about like that, that, that's the lady on the wall. Yeah, the oh, Romanian. The Romanian is the lady yeah. on the wall. Maybe uh, the, maybe that's why. No, maybe that's why. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. okay, all right, fair enough. Can't tonight. Written by Marcelo Hernandez, Mike Desenzo, and John Higgins. Two men, played by Ryan Gosling and Marcelo Hernandez, are trying to convince their friend, played by Keenan Thompson, to go out with them. And um, the original Beethoven. The <laughs> <laughs> and you're the only one that can do that in this room, and we're going to give that to you. Not just because I'm half Mexican, but because you guys are terrible at accents. And I also did not marry a Cuban woman. <laughs> no. Um, so what did you guys think of this? Did you like this? Is it? Hey, Brad, can you can you say Paramount Plus? Paramount Plus. <laughs> but he's no, there's no S. Oh, no, Paramount Plus. <laughs> That's exactly Ulu. 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 Ulu was my favorite. Uh, no, I, yeah. I thought it was funny the idea of like this this gringo, right? Marrying a Cuban, and all of a sudden he becomes this like Cuban man. You yeah, know? My, my favorite thing about it though is that. That's just one small joke yeah. in the larger sketch. Like th this kind of feels like a ten to one sketch in a way because like the f what they're talking about doing, like going and clubbing with the original, the original dog, dog from, from Beethoven, Beethoven, who would be in his mid thirties, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so yeah, th this one was 
was just really funny to me. Like, and Sarah Sherman coming up saying, "Oh, I hear some accents. I, I love countries." Yeah. <laughs> and then again, I like countries and places. Yeah. Exactly. And then like the the weird pause. Like, so I'll be back with your yeah. drinks. It was almost like that was a mistake. That's how, that's how stilted that was. Yeah. But it, it wasn't. No, it was not at perfect. all. It was perfect. Yeah. This was this was a uh, hilarious. This is very funny. Yeah. I, the, okay. What's wrong with you, Nate? I I, I like this one. No, <laughs> you, you said it was fine. Okay. I, I thought it was fine. It was good. To be fair, I didn't hear him say it was fine. Okay, I'm, I just, I, I, I'm just trying I, to pile I on. Thought, I thought I, I didn't know. I said it was fine. I thought it was good. <laughs> Gaslight Nate, a favorite thing to do. I was like, I don't know. What and I and uh, unlike when Michael B. Jordan had to do an accent that was similar to Marcelo Hernandez, his Ryan Gosling was actually good at his yeah. accent. So, yeah. and it does help that they give an excuse as well like because I, I would not have liked to see it if it if, if they didn't explain why he was doing it yeah it would have been very awkward yeah but maybe 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 marrying a cuban woman well, does that to, yeah, does that to you you since know he did marry a cuban woman in real life yeah so. he's a little bit more street cred than we do absolutely that's fine it's, fine. Right. it's whatever it's now fine. let's talk about the one that is blowing that up the internet <laughs> yeah beavis and butthead a live stream event on ai hosted by news nation was interrupted by two audience members played by ryan gosling and mikey day who are uh dressed like who look like look suspiciously like, like beavis, beavis and, and butthead. butthead um this sketch this audience character thing they did in 2018 if you guys remember mikey day was bart simpson I uh, for, forgot yeah. that entirely. Yeah, no, this was this was derived with the same idea. But, but uh, Streeter Seidel and Mikey Day had said that they wanted to get the Beavis and Butthead. This has been in, in, in the works for five years. Yeah. Right? They've been wanting to do it ever since. And and it's gone to table read. It's been cut. It's yeah. been cut. It's been cut. And Brad had sent us an article. What was that article uh, from? I, I from, wanna, it's from Vulture. From Vulture. They interviewed Heidi Gardner to ask her because she had the big moment where she broke like in one of the biggest ways like anyone can break. And it's because even though this has been coming up for five years, they never got it to the point where there was costume. Yeah. And even, which is hilarious. And actually, funnily enough, Heidi also said that uh, there was there was a one that got to table read and she was just an audience member in it. Yeah. So she didn't have the same role. Right. Uh, so, so yeah, so it never, never got to dress. So they never reached that point. I had to pause it and walk up to my screen to see Mikey Day's gums. Yeah. Because it, it first from far away, it looks like a mustache. Right. And so I, I seriously paused it and got up there and I started laughing even when it was still paused. This was fucking perfect. It was, it was hilarious. Just, just an, an amazing blend of just like this original idea like sure it's a, it's it's a technically a recurring bit but like the fact that they used Beavis and Butthead in this way and didn't just do like a live action movie trailer or something back, like of that of all the people to bring back Beavis and Butthead that was the yeah. absurdest of it all like characters I don't think about at all right right like, but yeah it's like but everyone knows was there a part of you at the beginning of the sketch that was worried they were doing something topical like a like a political sketch no, no, I didn't feel that. Uh -huh. I, for I, I did until she. Because you're waiting about, for it, right? Well, because it was News Nation. Yeah, and then but then so she was talking oh, about with, AI. With the AI stuff? Yeah. Oh, so you thought maybe this is going to be a political thing? Okay. Yeah. yeah I can so see so that. the sure. fact that it veered into something sure. completely different was so refreshing. And so they they not only do they do you know like the first laugh for me was obviously when I see Ryan Gosling right, but then when when <laughs> Keenan Thompson goes. With the blonde pompadour, <laughs> like I haven't heard the word pompadour yeah. in a decade, and it was just so People funny to hear him talking say about Keenan much when they're talking about the sketch. He was fantastic oh. in this; it was great. It, so, he, do you want him to move to yes? <laughs> and he didn't break at all. No, like he he did not break, and and well, he he was grinning while like while so he, yeah. Let me ask you a question: Do the do the extras? Do they have? They the, were fantastic. Do they have earplugs in? I doubt it. No. I mean, because seriously, how, they were perfect. I would, I would have, I would have died. Well, but that's, I, that's, I was that's watching thing, though, every one of them, and none of them broke. And it's, none it, of them even green. I don't even think it's like even if you, even if they couldn't hear, it's a visual gag. Like, there's no way you're not like. Yeah, I know, but they're just really good then. Because because Heidi Gardner wasn't laughing because what someone said. It's the sight of Mikey Day and Ryan Gosling or, or Chloe Feynman when they turn around and they look. Yeah, at her, she, she couldn't she just, do it either. Like, yeah. She can't, I don't know. I just thought that it, it, there must be something preventing these people from getting the whole full picture because that's really hard to do. Maybe so they're just them. humorous. So hey, hey, maybe, maybe, maybe the writers or creators don't listen to the show, but maybe, maybe one of you extras that was in there. You know, if you're listening right now, uh, kudos, good job. Yeah, I was, I was very much impressed. But man, watching Heidi break because she rarely, rarely breaks, breaks. and the fact that she broke in such a I dramatic mean, way, really could, big. It was one of those laughs. You guys have had it before. She would can't stop. When you can't stop and you're supposed to stop laughing yeah. and you just, it just won't, your body won't let you stop. That's where she was. Yeah. Right. And she even said in the interview too, that like it, 
it made her feel like uh, while she was talking about an interview, she started feeling worse and unprofessional because she saw them in full makeup in dress rehearsal. <laughs> so it was it's not, it's not like it, it wasn't was, the first. Yeah, time it was the first time she'd seen them in the live show. She already seen it. She knew it was coming, but she still couldn't handle it. I also like that. Uh, of course, the the bit being that they don't know that the, oh, this is the first time I'm hearing there's a character that I look mm-hmm. like, and the, the normal voice coming out of those two, right? Yeah. So they did. I like that because they could have they could have had Ryan Gosling try to do like, well, I don't know, I, I've never had like a weird, right? Exactly. But they didn't. Yeah. I love that. But but then it's, it's like you're sitting just like they sit <laughs> on the show. <laughs> oh, you sat them next to each other. <laughs> and, then, and then of course they do laugh like each other, which which is right. great. But yeah, it was like uh, what he's like. Oh, I'm Brian. I'm, I'm Jeff or whatever. Oh God, that was so good. Um, uh, Heidi Gardner also mentioned that one of the things. So there's two things that she kind of pinpointed, other than just the pure look of Mikey Day and Ryan Gosling, that seemed to have broken her. She said one of them was that in the live show, Mikey seemed to have done like an eye bulge as like a recognition when she looked at, at her, which kind of sent her down the thing. And then she said she also got it in her head for whatever reason. It took her back to being a kid. And she talked about the movie Warriors of Virtue. Do you guys remember this movie? I do not. It's this fantasy movie uh, that is about these kangaroo warriors that have like full on prosthetic. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, like like face makeup, animatronic stuff, kind of like Ninja Turtles in a way. Uh, it came out in like 1997. She said her and her friends saw it and like they were laughing at it so much because of that. And she said, so she said that kind of like took her okay. back because it kind of felt like the same thing because the makeup was so good on Mikey and, and Ryan. Yeah. Kudos to the costume department. Seriously. I mean, you guys crushed it. That was fantastic. Think about, think about the history of the sketches we've seen. Um, over the years and the breaks, right? Sometimes you have a, a kind of a, a smile or a little laugh, but there have been some sketches where it just goes off the rails. I think of um, the... Debbie lo- Downer is the one that I think of the, yep, the, the most. Debbie yeah, Downer. That's one of the biggest uh, ones. Disney, particularly the Disney like one. Like I, Lohan, I, yeah. and, and the the line is, I believe it's like, I just found out I can't have kids. Yeah. <laughs> and I just remember uh, they all were just like pressing into yeah. their faces because it was so The other hard. one is The Lovers with um, uh, Barbara and Dave or John or something like that. The one where uh, Will Ferrell uh, is in the hot tub. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's yeah, another yeah. one where they just kind of lose it, right? Yeah. Even Will Ferrell, who never loses it, loses it in that one. Um, and I don't know. Can you think of any else? I don't I don't think there was, there was th- so he he stifled it but it was one of like the the biggest hardiest laughs that i think he's had and there was that recent one when they did lisa from temecula and she said that line uh, uh and bowen yang just like immediately guffawed so yeah, loudly yeah yeah I, I just love when that stuff happens organically right yeah obviously no jimmy felling no yeah. jimmy felling around what do you mean never mind <laughs> All right, moving Jimmy on. Fallon is a serious man. Yes, yes, he is. Oh, I listened to the podcast that they did, Strike Force Five, with the five. I, t- I think I told you guys about this last time. The five um, ne- late night hosts did during the yes, uh, and he he makes fun of himself in that podcast for breaking, and he's like, I just, I just find things very funny, and he's like, and I just was so bad at it because I just like. You just look. He was just having so much fun. Yeah, he's like, that's why I'm not a great sketch sketch actor. Though he would do. I forgot how good Jimmy Fallon is. Jimmy Fallon. His impressions impressions are fantastic. He's fantastic. He does good impressions. He's very, very good at it. I I did. He should have just stuck to that. All right, moving on. Weekend update: Trump's abortion ban claims O.J. Simpson dies at 76. Golden Bachelor divorce. New York City considers giving rats birth control. The Weekend Update anchors Colin Jost and Michael Che tackled the week's biggest news, like Arizona reinstating abortion law from 1864. Ben, for our new listeners. Hold which, on. Before we get, we get into that, before we do that, I have my first question about uh, Weekend Update that I've ever had. and uh, It's about a joke, and I just didn't get it. So I'm going to ask. Oh, okay. Um, the the 1864 abortion law stuff. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they made a joke about cocaine and uh, prayer being yeah. the only two things that a doctor prescribes. Yeah, and then Saturday Sunday. Yeah, cocaine Saturday, church Sunday. I I get that, but also I I guess maybe it is so that was the joke. Uh, that's far as right, I that's know. kind of because it. because he he so the way he ordered or, the words though or, he said prayer and cocaine Saturday Sunday, and so if you no, were he, said, to, he said cocaine in a Bible. Saturday, no no he, no no he said he said they 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 if you I I, I watched it twice because I was not. I didn't know why you yeah, wanted to rewatch it. I didn't. It, it was the the prayer, whatever prayer or Bible first, and then cocaine. But then he said Saturday Sunday, so I didn't really, I didn't really, oh. it didn't follow. Okay, so that's that, all. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. Okay, well, all right. Uh, 
Ben, while you're talking, will you please, for our new listeners, explain the barometer first? And yeah. While we do that, Brad, write your number down. I believe you I'm already, already did. Done. I think you already did. Um, so Don't we, try we, and peek. We make well. I did not. We Don't we make right. But Brad, write this down. Um, a number between one and a hundred uh, that describes the interaction between Colin Jost and Michael Che, insofar as their level of having fun with one another together. Now, Brett, Nate has posited that yes, if we can update and the jokes are going well overall, this will increase the number anyway. I think that it doesn't influence it that much. However. Mm-hmm. I'm right. You're wrong, but that's, that's fair. Um, I will. I will say, I'm gonna. I mean, it was to me that was very high this week. They they interacted directly. There there were plenty of moments. I mean, there's like three three moments yeah. where they interacted directly. Yeah, I'm going ninety. Actually, I was gonna say ninety two. That's ninety. What? No, I was gonna say ninety as well. I'm not joking. Oh, that's fine. Hey, hey, hey. 90. Together, we're gonna say ninety. Okay. What you, Brad, what is it? Oh, eighty five. Oh, come oh, geez. on, jeez. You're such a so rascal. So why didn't you like this one? Yeah, no, 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 I didn't. Why'd you hate this? Why did you hate it? I did really like this one. Um, I, I would have liked them to interact a little bit more. Oh my god, this was so much interaction. It was so much. They were having so fun. Much. They it were having a so lot. Much. They were having a lot. It if, wasn't joke swap. If the like, radometer was ranking the interaction between Michael Che and Caitlin Clark, sure. Colin Jost literally teed her up and then said, "Unlike Che, I respect or whatever." Like they yeah. they were having fun at each other's expense. This was your bread upper is broken. No, not bro. No, we do need to get it recalibrated. It's true. For we'll sure. take him into the shop. Um. So, any jokes other than the abortion joke, um, prayer and cocaine joke stand out to you guys that you liked? I mean, I'm, I, anytime you p- include a Mitch McConnell picture, yeah, I'm I'm happy. Of course, seeing seen here yeah. doing uh, something. Right? D- seen here, and this time it was uh, uh, uh learning that a black woman recorded a country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, did a country song. Um, Ballsy of Michael J to do a well, not ballsy. I'm she, she, sure she knew about it, but to do an apron joke, you know, right before Caitlin Clark yep. comes out, that's that's still pretty funny. Um, no, I overall pretty pretty good. Uh, the 1864 stuff was fine. You know what I really wish though is that they would have cut to a Norm McDonald clip. Yeah, of I was OJ say, Simpson. I really missed. Yeah, I, I like having the Norm McDonald quip in there. I feel like they could they should have done something to like reference because of he just let him have it over the years. There's there there's a if and, you, ha- and, you haven't watched it or you didn't experience Norm McDonald was right. There is a like eleven minute supercut featuring like pretty much all of the. It's jokes. actually broken into two. It's twenty minutes long. Oh, it's okay. There's a supercut yeah. one and two. So of just where Norm Macdonald just did jokes, shits, yeah, all over OJ Simpson. It's incredible. Um, so yeah, I wish they would have done a, a cut to like a little, a, or at least a little homage to hit, to that nod or whatever. Yeah, I'm sure that they, again, Lauren Michaels is still in, uh, you know. In charge of the show, maybe he thought that would have been inappropriate because he's dead now. And st- I don't know who knows. Just- oh, well, he was a good man. I know. Like that's the thing. I don't. I don't get that. You know why not shit on a, a yeah, guy exactly. that was a fucking Fuck murder that guy? All right. <laughs> Moving on. Weekend update. Bit resident boyfriend Michael Longfellow on weaponized incompetence. Resident boyfriend Michael Longfellow stops by weekend update to discuss weaponized incompetence. You know, Kate is his real girlfriend in real life, so that was fun. His apology to Kate at the end. Who's, who's his girlfriend? Kate. Who? Her name's, her name's Kate, Brad. How do you know that? I looked it up. I Googled, does Michael Longfellow have a girlfriend? Yes, it's Kate. You sure it's not just part of the bit? No, it really is Kate, because I saw him. Uh, I saw her on his Instagram. Uh, he said, uh, as far as the Michael Longfellow bits go, not near the top for me. Yeah. However, it was a little off here and there. I still really enjoyed it. Yeah, I felt so too. I felt like he didn't find the rhythm... In in some of the because his his is a very patient type of comedy, right? Um, what did you think about his cadence, Brad? Because I, again, I think yeah. that that's the thing. Like normally, yeah. there's a good he's got a good flow to it, exactly. And and it takes a second, but it gets you. Yeah, there was something that felt a little bit off as but far not as much. As far as, yeah, not, it didn't ruin it or anything. It was still really funny. Um, and he's he just got like a a confidence about him that works for that kind Michael of Michael Longfellow, too. ladies. It's just a name. <laughs> Small piece joke. Like, I love that. And I also love the, like, because I, I was supposed to pick up our cat from the uh, the vet, and I'm just realizing now as I'm talking that I forgot <laughs> to do it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I, honestly, there's enough in here that I still really liked it. I don't think you swap that out for something different. I mean, I still think this is a very, very strong yeah, yeah, uh, update character. I just, I love when he stops by the desk, so. He hasn't been, he hasn't been on the desk for a while, so it's good to have him back. He hasn't been in too many sketches either. No. Well, he was he was in the um, Beavis and Butthead sketch. Yes, just, he was. He, oh, that's actually a really really funny part about that, where the 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 whole Beavis and Butthead guys like looking around, like they're not talking about me, right? And then, then he points to Michael Longfellow, yeah. and he has to say, 
dude, he's talking about you. Yep. Yeah. It's so good. Longfellow. Oh, Longfellow. It's 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 just a name. All right. Weekend update bit. Caitlin Clark on the WNBA draft. Caitlin Clark stops by Weekend Update to discuss women's sports and the WNBA draft. I really liked how Colin Jost brings in the the clip, right, of Michael Che. Just uh, going, on going on and on about women's Which basketball. is why I gave the barometer a 90 because, again, over and over again, there was a lot of fun that the two hosts were having. Especially after uh, – Michael J says a joke and then it comes to Colin to do the next joke and he goes, wait, did that eventually get a get an applause? Get get applause? Like they they were yeah, they, there's, there's uh, some good stuff, yeah, but it wasn't like a you know an all time you know nineties high. Caitlin Clark for being a professional now a professional athlete delivered those lines fine. She didn't flub a line. Yes, it should. it was it was of course reading off the keywords and being serious about it for being the first time she's probably ever done anything like, like a, that. A college student, yeah, honestly, yeah. just. Just by not flubbing the lines yeah. is is just huge. But then also waiting for the audience enough, you know, and because that's really hard. Even professional actors screw that up. Well, they they think they go way too early, and then that you can't hear what they're saying or whatever. Yeah. She did fine for sure. You know, yeah. Because um, yeah, sometimes they bring on people that have their cultural moment in history right after, yeah. and it's not that great. No, and I thought this, this was, was funny. Great. Actually, yeah. Michael Phelps. Is that what happened? No, he was no, he was great actually. actually. Yeah, <laughs> wait a minute. Um, so no, uh, I did like that <laughs> and because Che's like, do you write that? You really wrote these? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it was great. I also, I, I think that they did a thing too where he didn't read them beforehand. Yeah. Cause I, I think Che knew that Caitlin was coming on the show, but I don't think he knew the jokes because the way he was reacting the and reading well, them, the first read, he was taking his time yeah, and going exactly. very slow. So I'm like, okay, this yeah, is probably, I don't, I don't think he knew that the jokes were that's, coming. That's, so that's good. a lot of fun. Yeah. I love that. You know, so yeah, the browner should have gone up a little bit more because of that. Colin too. didn't do that though. That's just, a, uh, he's one of the writers. Oh my God. He probably wrote all of them actually. Oh, look at me. I, I don't, I want to know how the barometer works. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, we do. We just like a little bit of scientific method behind the. I, yeah, I got your scientific method. I think, right here I think he looked at us shorts. and he says, "They're going to go high this week. I'm going to dumb yeah, it down exactly. a little bit." I don't he, want them to in get... his heart, it's a ninety. No, it is. Yeah, it is. My heart's an eighty-five. Mm, yeah, well, barometer don't lie. Mm. All right, moving on. Speaking of lying, Doctor, written by Bowen Yang, Mike Desenzo, and Jake Norwin, a medical team played by Bowen Yang and Ryan Gosling, delivers news to a family consisting of Heidi Gardner, Andrew Dismukes, James Austin Johnson, and Chloe Trost. Um, I thought this would almost be an Andrew Dismukes type of sketch as well. Um, he was obviously in it, but he was not one of the writers. Uh, this was Bowen Yang's brainchild. What did you guys think of this? Um, obviously, it wasn't my fault. The wig. Uh, the wigs were crazy. But also, there was also there was an air an AirPod inside of him when we started. <laughs> I didn't kill him. Did you guys uh, also catch where Heidi Gardner starts laughing? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. It's because very, the camera. It's very, it's very no, not 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 just the camera. No, it's be, it's because Molly Carney hit Bo and Yang with the wheelchair. And then, oh, yeah, but that, but that's another one. That's yep. what, that's what, oh, yeah. But then, and then Ryan Gosling is holding the camera backwards, and she, yeah, yeah, as, as she laughs, she, she was having a out. fun time. She was she having was. a fun episode. Yeah. yeah. She was high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she yeah. I, Molly Carney, though, hitting. You can tell they felt so bad after <laughs> ramming the wheelchair into Bowen Yang's ankle. And that must have hurt like a bitch, too. <laughs> Uh, you know, I didn't really notice it that bad. I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch. That oh, it is ago. it is just a hard hit oh, right right, I don't right know. when they're maybe I looked in. maybe I looked away or something. I I must have missed oh, that. It was it was hilarious. I'll check that out. That's yeah. hilarious. It was but, probably the funniest part of the. the so thing do as we well. just okay? Keep going. Sorry. My my favorite part actually is the when when they're over on the side and they're feeding each other the cookie crumbles <laughs> because Bo and Yang keeps trying to give Ryan some and he doesn't take it, but he gives Bo and like three spoonfuls. <laughs> so I love. I almost crushed up Ryan. Cookies upstairs body. and wrote cookie crumbles <laughs> and brought them down as a snack for us. Ryan Gosling's bodies. They're cookie temple. crumbles. They're cookie crumbles. The, was, I yeah. just I just loved how like it's so silly and how simple like the voices were. Like it was just a little like adjustment in like their tone of voice and cadence and yeah. like it was just just a lot of fun. Yeah. No. Good. Good job, guys. Again, a, a good a good sketch. James Austin huh? Johnson. Yeah, actually, I like the idea of the cookie crumbles. All right. Moving on. Final sketch of the live show. Aaron Brockovich, written by Jake Norwin, Allison Gates, and Chloe Feynman. In a deleted scene from the movie Aaron Brockovich, a man, played by Ryan Gosling, introduces himself to his new neighbor, Chloe Feynman, playing Aaron Brockovich. Um, 
I thought this was fine. I thought. Have you seen Aaron Brockovich? Not lately. That's what I thought. Maybe I would have liked it better. I I hear anyway that uh, Chloe Feynman's Aaron Brockovich is dead on. It's yeah, so I, good. Well, listening to it, I was like, oh my gosh, she really like sounds like Julia Roberts. She as thanked, Aaron Brockovich. She thanked uh, her vocal coach on her Instagram for yeah, she coaching really her on how to do Aaron Brockovich. But this like sketch was good. But I really think that there were so many missed opportunities for like the last word of the friends and like the, what you're going to say next. I, man, I just wish they would have had more time to come up with more. I do wonder if this got pared down from like sure. being more, especially since this is one of those Turner classic movies ones and they didn't do Reese to what? Uh, or anything like that, and so like the fact that they did like a, a rush like video opening for it makes yeah. me feel like they they. But knew. man, I I there's something there though. That's a yeah. really funny premise, and like to end on end on the word, and then and then start the next character off. It's a game, you know. Yeah. I love. I really like the premise. It, I I still I, just, I wanted more. I still thought it was really funny, and like, I laughed especially because like ending with Keenan Thompson doing those sounds. God, that karate sound. Keenan was, was my, I think, I think my favorite part. Just amazing, it. and like, hilarious. and and they laugh again. Be, like even Chloe laughs because of Keenan Thompson's karate sound. No, it's again no bad sketches tonight. Or, no, not uh, at all. Not not we're a not, bad sketch. We're not even bunch. done because this is the first time I have ever seen at the end of an episode of SNL or right before the end they actually tell people to go watch. Yeah, they advertise a, a, a couple times sketch. sketch, which is which is rare. Now, do you think this is because it, they it was like this is so good we we just it's literally cut for time we don't know what else to cut and. We, we want to direct people there because they, they really wish they could have kept it as part of the well, show for the first time. Well, I think that it's it's one of those sketches where like it's already done. So like they're going right. to put it out there, you know, like also it was six minutes long. Yeah. So it w it's not like they could have just squeezed it in. That's the thing. And, and it wasn't actually cut for time. And they try to favor the live sketches sure. over the pre-recorded sketches. That makes so. sense. Um, I'm glad they did. I'm glad they released it, though. All right. Let me let me read about it real quick. Uh, Papyrus 2 written by Julio Torres. In this cover time sketch, Stephen, played by Ryan Gosling, is confronted with the very thing he has been trying to avoid after spending years working to overcome it. The sketch also includes Ego Wodum, Sarah Sherman, Mikey Day, and former cast member Cal Mooney. Um, I think it was Julio, Julio Torres that said on his Instagram or his his, his Twitter, essentially because people were like, oh, this should have made the, the actual show. And he's like... It's really not the practice of SNL to include a sketch that's three times longer than regular, you know, to be right. in this because it was long. Yeah. And, and but it was long, but it was production wise. It was worth it. It was so good. Yeah. Uh, it was hilarious. I loved it. I thought it was a great addition to I the think, first Papyrus sketch. I honestly think it's even better than the original Papyrus sketch. Yeah. Just the way it plays out. Like it has a like a proper beginning, middle and end. Like I love the build up to like what actually happens. I like that. It actually gives the character like a good ending. Julio Torres is not a current writer on SNL. Correct? No, they brought him back just for this. Yeah. Cause he, he was a writer on SNL and then he did a, he had a, a did you watch his HBO special? No, it was one of the most unique things I've ever seen in my entire life. It's, I remember seeing previews it's, it's for called it. like my favorite shapes or something. Yeah, I've been meaning to watch it's it. It's a conveyor belt type thing where he just brings out shapes and talks about them. Yeah. But then there's comedy, obviously, out of that. It's just, the again, he, his brain. Kind of Dimitri Martin-esque. Yeah, but even more absurdist. Yeah. Like an absurdist Dimitri Martin. Uh, really, really funny guy. I'll have yeah. to check it out. Yeah. He is, uh, if you're familiar with Los Spookies. Yeah, Los Spookies was, I believe, it's a, it's a, a Spanish series. language series. Yeah, yeah Fred yeah. Armisen's in it. And yeah, like, he's a writer, executive director, and is the main role of that. But yeah, he was on SNL for a, a number of years as a writer. And they brought him back just for this. That's um, awesome. So that I'm assuming he wrote the first Papyrus then in 2017. Yeah, I assume. Yep. 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 Papyrus but, bold. But yeah, just the yeah, the escalation yeah. in this one. The storytelling is is great. The making. I it, thought. Oh, sorry. Making his last name Wingdings. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I also thought what was going to happen in this sketch is that he was truly just on a first date. And then when it comes to find out that that he's he picked yeah, her so out, it's, a whole it's plan. so yeah. yeah that that it, it escalated crazy. Yeah. Like I loved it. Yeah. Did you notice that the uh, there's a subtitle for Papyrus at the end that's in Wingdings font? Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. Did you look up what it says? No. But I actually what I what okay what I did notice is that I don't think that's correct because there's more characters than so it says something longer than the word Papyrus then. No, no, it says no, it says yeah, it's, it's well because it's it's meant to mimic Avatar: The Way of Water. So oh, 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 gotcha, gotcha. And gotcha. it was it was the way of Steve. Ah, yeah, uh, nice. Uh, nice. 
Um, so what did you guys think did about? Did you look that up or did you, where'd you read that? No, I had to look it up. Cause, but, but no, some like you read it somewhere, or you looked at like you you found. No, no, no. On, I, you I, did the research yourself. No, God, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I I would I would have if somebody didn't do it, but I checked Reddit and they had already oh, cracked gotcha, it on Reddit. Gotcha. All right, well that's the episode again. If you've not gone to the Saturday Night Live YouTube page to watch Papyrus Two, you definitely should. It's also just just beautiful. Like it is a well made. Yeah. Again, the production sketch. value. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, plus, you get to see our, our old friend Kyle Mooney again. Oh, God, I love Kyle Mooney. Who does great in it. Um, Let's talk about sketch, um, sketch, sketch of, the night. of the Night. Yeah, I'm going to go with... Can we, um, no, can, no, can no, we, no, I would can, like to go... Can, hold on. Can we just take Beavis and Butt out? Because that would be it no matter no, what. Beavis and Butt, it's my choice. Yeah, it's going to be my choice. But yeah, it's going to yeah. be a choice for everybody. So like, what was your second favorite sketch then? Because that one, it's, no, it's an the all-timer. Best, the, but the, but but that's my choice. Wow. Yeah. What would be your second if you couldn't choose that one? I don't. I, just, I mean, well, you're really throwing this on. Yeah, us. you're we taking the wind out of our sails. I mean, now. I, mean, I would say probably I liked the engagement a lot. Okay. <sighs> Which Take your time. Just, it's a podcast. It's fine. We got time. We got time. We're going to pick Beavis and Butthead because, like, I, I mean, you, you can. No, we, we, we all did. Again. I'm, we all I'm, did. Oh, I didn't know you did. I didn't know you liked it. Yeah. Oh, no, we all hated it. I wish I could pick Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, fine. No, Beavis and Butthead. Then no, I guess. Oh, my no, God. No, Close Encounters would have been my second favorite. But I did. But oh, I Close did, Encounters. Yeah. I can't but I did really like the engagement as well. Uh, yeah, it would have been. It would have been close. Or sorry, it would have been uh, Beavis and Butthead, uh, Close Encounters, and then the engagement. Yeah, I'd probably say that too. I it, forgot about. Clo- oh, I'm, so now everyone's changing well, because so Brad good. made a good point. I was looking at the sketches to look through for my second place, and I just didn't include the cold open because <laughs> the cold so open is to, never good. That's yeah. never included in my like. Uh, which one's the best? Honestly, like the monologue could have been one of the like the monologue the sketches. Of the night, you you know? know my MVP of the night, the hair and makeup department. Wow. Honestly, it's pretty. It's, mine was Ryan Gosling. Yeah, mine's Ryan Gosling too. I'm giving it to the hair and makeup that the doctor sketch. Because this is one of awesome. those this is one of those instances where the Beavis like, butthead was perfect. The host has to like really go above and beyond to like truly be worthy of being an MVP, at least and, from my perspective. And Gosling was even better it, than it's I could have. Emmy hoped. worthy in my opinion. Oh, if he doesn't this, get an Emmy nomination for this this hosting set, I'll be furious. So if the hair and makeup department does not get an Emmy. Oh no, for real. They they deserve it. Absolutely. Yeah. Just it was really, awesome. Yeah, it was incredible. They did such a great job. So that's all we have for you on this episode. Do we have any new episodes coming up? Um, any announcements for? I believe it's, is it, uh, what's her name? Dua Lipa? Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa uh, in a dual role. Dua both. Du- dual. Dua Lipa, Dua both. Dua Lipa. Dual Lipa? Yeah. Oh, okay. Another one I have a crush on, guys. I just have a crush on the Dua Lipa. I had a crush on her first. Okay, so back off. I don't think so. I, I think did. Uh, you didn't even. You weren't even. A, what? We, is this I, is not middle school. What I, are you doing? I distinctly remember you having a conversation with you in the car, and you're like, you're like, no, I don't really know much you about don't Dua Lipa. Even know who Dua Lipa. I had to was. show you pictures of Dua Lipa, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, a week later, you're like, you know what, guys? I think I got a crush on Dua Lipa. Here's, here's the crazy the part, way. though. No, here's the crazy part. Brad did not show you pictures on his phone. He just had. Photos clipped out of magazines. Well, yeah. How else? Am I, <laughs> like, why, why wouldn't I? Like that's, that's the best no, it, quality you're gonna get. You it unfolded them from your wallet. You were like, "These is this is Dua Lipa." They definitely didn't make any cracking sounds. Like, <laughs> I didn't know they still made Tiger Beat. But <laughs> now you know. So you learned two things: that Dua Lipa is is hot, so and got, Tiger Beat is still a thing. We've got a week off, and then we'll have the Dua Lipa episode. Uh, they I mean, have it. I'm expecting this week, or maybe. Yeah, next week actually they'll announce the rest of the sh- this the season. I'm we'll we'll see because they they always do a Mother's Day episode, so we're, yeah. we're I'm hopeful for that. Uh, we'll at least get one more after Dua Lipa and maybe three total. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll and be good. She Dua Lipa. This will be her third time uh, on, on SNL, show. but the first time hosting. Hosting, yeah. So yes, I'm excited. I about believe that. the last time she was on was uh, Natalie Portman. Yeah, when it was a Dua Lipa year. Uh, oh, you silly, stupid you son silly. of a bitch. Wow. Um, aggressive for a kind of easy joke that I made. But okay. What about who does, who on SNL has done a Dua Lipa impression? Chloe Feynman. No. <laughs> I mean, that's, she does that right, right? Who did a Dua Lipa impression on SNL? Melissa Villasenor? Correct. Ooh, nice. Yep. Uh, Dua Lipa was on December 19th, 20, uh, 2020. When uh, Kristen Wiig hosted. There you go. And then she was on... The Natalie Portman episode before February that. 3rd, yeah, 2018 with Natalie Portman. Cold Open, Fox and Friends. Which was a leap year. No, it wasn't. You don't know anything about leap years. No, it wasn't a leap year. This year was a leap year. 
So it should be fun. Uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, it's it's hard though because we certainly got probably the best episode. I mean, I've seen listen, Dua Lipa's gonna even if it's an amazing episode. I just I don't see how you get better than this one. It honestly, that's was, hard. That's hard it, to host this is after a ten out of ten episode for sure. There's ways that Dua Lipa can easily overshadow how Ryan so, Gosling. So. Uh, I, I'm not gonna say. Cut his mic. Cut his mic. <laughs> Uh, we're no, we're uh, we're we're very much looking forward to to hearing your feedback about this episode. We're gonna try to get up as soon as possible, and, and I just can't wait to hear what you yeah. all have to say about it. I mean, you you know that it's up by now because you're listening to it. So I just can't wait for you guys to get it up and uh, get it up with me. <laughs> hey, <laughs> wait, wait, no, no, cut, cut my mic, cut my mic. Hey, Brad, where can people find you online, buddy? Uh, you can find me googling pictures of Dua Lipa. <laughs> uh, I just, you, there's always new ones. That's the best thing. That's it's the like, best thing about Dua Lipa. The there's just always new photos. Always, of her? Yeah, it's the best thing about Dua Lipa. There's always new photos of her. I, I can't get enough. Uh, oh boy. No, but like follow her on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Don't follow me. Follow her. Yeah, just follow Dua Lipa on Instagram. Yeah, where can you find me? You can find me the comments on her Instagram page. <laughs> Every single post. <laughs> <laughs> post that Dua Lipa makes, I just go, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to put it away from my <laughs> uh, But no, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan <laughs> underscore Anderton, and uh, I also write full reviews of Saturday Night Live uh, the day after the episode has aired, so you can check out a little more in-depth my thoughts about uh, each episode if you want to check them out before we get the episode recorded. We're at can people check it out? Slashfilm.com, in case I didn't say it. Uh, yeah, I, I, apparently I didn't. I was too busy thinking about Dua Lipa. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> hey girl hey girl hey what's up oh uh, you can find me online if you want to yeah me too more importantly you can find us online at the 10 one.com or find us on twitter or um uh, facebook you can just comment uh enjoy the show give us a, a rating a review let us know how we're doing um and you know just participate in whatever you can we appreciate you as a listener and hope you continue on as we finish the season that we're in for season 49. So thanks so much for listening. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. Bye-bye. <laughs>